Hi everyone, um, I haven't done a video blog in ages so I thought it was about time. Uh, basically I'm just going to do a really brief talk about um, some topics that have been coming up mainly via email and contact on my Facebook and blogs and different resources. I guess the big thing I'm going to talk about today is relationship with food. Um, I just wanted to put this out to speak to a few of the girls that have contacted me recently um, about issues they're having towards food, relationships towards food, binge eating, eating disorders, all those kind of topics that no one really talks about, um, but it's really common. So I wanted to put this video together to tell you that it is common that it's very normal and I mean it's not healthy but it's very common so not to beat yourself up about it and that you're not alone and that there's something that you can do about it. Um, so my awesome coach and mentor Lane Norton has his video series out and I encourage all of you to go and watch that um, if you haven't already done so. Um, watch all his videos on metabolic damage um, and the whole series of them, I think he's got four out and then myths about fat loss. There's heaps of good info out there that should hopefully just, you know, awaken to you to the fact that you're not alone and that this is, you know, a short-term problem, hopefully, not a long-term thing that you have to live with through the rest of your life, but it will take some time to possibly recover a little bit of the damage that might have been done um, if it's been going on for a long time. Anyway, I'm not going to go into, you know, metabolic adaptation or damage or set points or any of those terms that are flying around today um, because I think there's been enough videos out lately about it. Um, I will talk briefly about the dieting cycle and what happens um, when you keep going through those binges and purges, but I'm more going to talk about the relationships with food and some of the mindset stuff to help. Um, so basically, as you're all aware, if you've seen any of Wayne's videos or anyone else that, you know, puts up topics like that, Dr. Joe, there's heaps of other awesome people out there that are really good to follow and learn from. Um, basically, there's that vicious diet cycle. So, you know, when you keep dieting and then you have, you know, binges as well and you have highs and lows, um, your body really, really struggles to get any balance. So especially if you suppress your appetite and your diet for a long period of time, you know, when you then do have a binge or an influx of food, your body is really going to go into a state of storage. So that's when you're going to really tend to put on body fat and why people who binge eat tend to actually not lose a lot of weight and just their weight goes up and down so constantly. It's just a vicious cycle. So basically, um, you know, if you go and watch some of those other videos, I'll do another one out about it to, to better... Um, get you to understand the topic of, you know, metabolism and what's going on in your body when you're having consistent eating habits. Um, but, you know, it's more about the mindset, okay? So I guess the big thing I hear all the time is from clients, they'll send me an email and say, look, I overate my food, I couldn't stop eating, um, now I hate myself, now I'm fat, and now I'm going to not eat for the next three days or now I'm going to drop all the carbs out of my diet and I'm going to go and do two hours of cardio a day. Now, these are not the emails I get from my clients because, um, fingers crossed, they don't have those issues because we've done healthy approaches, but ones that people send to me um, asking for help and I want to help you um, because, I'll be honest, I've been there as well. Um, a few years ago when, uh, probably about when I was younger, about 18, 19, I was in that same scenario where I had no idea what foods I could eat and I just thought the best way about it was low carbs, lots of exercise, um, basically just smash my body as much as I could. But then what happens with that is that your cortisol levels are raised, your stress levels are raised, there's inflammation, you get sick. Um, it leads to binge eating because you just get to that point where you're so ravenous and your hormones are all over the place. Um, that yeah, all you want and all you think about is food. It consumes you. I used to get to the point where all I would think about was when was my next meal? What am I eating next? Um, if I snuck in this, you know, chocolate bar, then I would take out or I'd go and do an extra two hours of cardio. Um, and I'm getting a lot of the same sort of emails. So basically, um, I realized that this wasn't healthy and I didn't want to keep doing it. Um, I'm lucky that I started actually studying nutrition at that point when I was about 18 and 
learned how to feel my body um, a lot better and then I just wanted to keep learning and learning and then started working with Lane, which opened my eyes up to more of the longer term effects. Um, so what I'm saying, I guess, is don't be too hard on yourself for one. That's probably the most important thing. Um, it's very, very common and basically, you know, the hard facts are that you need to get a little bit of balance and structure back in your life. So tr as hard as it's going to be, um, try not to focus on your weight for a little while. Try to take your mindset off your body image um, and just take a step back and focus on what's really important in life. Because when all you do is think about food and when all you do is think about training and all you do is think about, you know, maybe going and binging and purging and not being social or, you know, all of those sort of factors, that's not a life that you want to live. Um, you know, if it takes all of that to, to be skinny or to be, you know, shredded, like, is that really worth it? Especially if there's a better way to do it. Um, I just don't think that, you know, that's sustainable long term and, it's not healthy for your relationships with anybody else. And I guess that's what I started to see that gym and training and eating was taking over my whole life. And I see that with people coming to me. So I'm here to tell you today that there, sh there can be a balance in your life. Um, as much as I'm an overworker and I love what I do and I love my job, I've now got a balance with my training and my eating. Um, so at the moment I'm in off season. Um, Got a bit more weight on, but that's okay because I'm putting on a bit of muscle. I'm going to start getting ready for some shows soon. And I'm actually at a comfortable place in my life where I'm okay having a little bit more weight on my body. Um, knowing that I've actually got good energy, training well, um, my business is successful, my relationships with people are great. So, you know, there's so many other positive things in your life besides body image. And, you know, to think about... The longer term goals, I guess I got a bit of a health scare when this is a very common topic and a little bit personal, but stopped getting my period um, for a couple of years and, you know, realized it was from those things that I was doing in my body and my hormones being off um, and now I'm getting that back to normal. So me worrying in the back of my mind, what if I want to have children in a few years time? What if those stupid, you know, thoughts I had about body image at 18 were going to affect my chances of having children when I'm older? You know, there's so many more important things in life and that's really what I want people to focus on. So getting back to the topic, so how do we work around these issues? Um, well, every single person is going to be different. It's, it, it's just going to be setting an action plan in place that's going to support your lifestyle and support what you're going through and just take it really slowly. Um, I guess, like, I changed my thoughts about food. I educated myself a bit more. So education is probably key. Um, if you don't know a lot about nutritional training, try to get in contact with a really good coach who's credible, who's you know got some success stories with clients, doing healthy nutrition and training programs, um, lifestyle approaches, you know, looking after your metabolism, healthy macronutrient intakes, not overstraining the body with cardiovascular exercise. Um, you know, go to those places first. Watch Lane's videos. You know, go to those resources where you can. And then maybe set an action plan in place. Jot down, you know, three major things in your life that are important to you. And then take a look back at them and think, if I was skinnier or if I was fitter or if I was more shredded, would those three goals in life or those three things that I think about every day change? Um, and would you be thinking about your body image in relation to those issues in a week's time? In six months' time, in a year's time, probably not. And I guess that's how I try to get my clients to think about food. So if I have a client email me and go, look, I overate on my calories for the day, um, I miscalculated something, or I was at a birthday and I had one slice of cake, and now I'm going to go jump off a bridge. Like, it's basically how extreme some people get sometimes. Um, and, you know, as a coach, <laughs> I mean... What am I going to say back to that? Like, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, okay? It's one day. As long as those habits don't become a regular thing, that's absolutely fine. I'm going to simply reply back to them and say, look, that's cool. 
It may affect your results this week a little bit, but we're just going to get back on track tomorrow and next week your results are going to be awesome and we'll just get back on that compliancy because compliancy is going to lead to results, consistent efforts over a course of time. And if a client's having one slice of cake compared to a complete binge and they used to be a binge eater, then that's a step forward. They've progressed. So at the end of the day, they're only going slightly over on calories. They're not stressed out about it. They're not having that binge purge response and they're able to get on with their life the next day. Um, so for all you people who have overeaten before and had those binge eating problems, you know you wake up the next day and you feel awful and you hate life and you hate yourself and all those ne negative emotions. So instead, if you can consciously in the moment when you start getting into that eating behavior, when you start putting that food in your mouth, just take a moment to think, okay, I can stop now or I can keep going and think about how I'm going to feel this afternoon or the next day or for the rest of the week. You know, how is my mood then going to affect my relationships, affect my work, affect my life, rather than just stopping right now, taking a step back, taking a breath and just realising that food can't have that much control in your life. You know, you're a strong person and, you know, everyone struggles with willpower. Um, but I think that the key message here is just try not to be so hard on yourself. No one's perfect. No one's aiming for perfection. I mean, what even is perfection? You know, that comes down to perception. So I think what I try to say to clients and even to myself is that I'm just trying to be the best version of me and I'm going to have challenges. I don't want to be perfect. I don't want to try to be perfect. But if every day I can make improvements on things that I might have done wrong in the past, then that's a step forward, not a step back. So it's the same when it comes to eating. If you can take little steps forward um, in your relationship with food and your approach to food to reduce those eating behaviours that put so much strain on your life, then you're doing really well. Don't expect to go from one extreme to the other. So if you have been a binge eater and or you know had bulimia or any issues like that, and then you're trying to go to perfect calorie intake, perfect macronutrient targets, never having a macro off, the same thing's going to happen. Don't put that pressure on yourself. You know, <laughs> allow yourself to improve over time rather than expecting it to come straight away. And I'm not going to harp on about macros, but macronutrient diets are basically getting a protein, carb, fat intake and fibre and working that into a realistic goal and um, amount that's right for your body. I mean, I still believe that you need to really follow your micronutrient intakes to make sure that your energy levels are really good, um, that if you have any deficiencies in vitamins or minerals, you're getting adequate intakes. But the good thing about macronutrients rather than just a diet plan that someone might give you is that you actually learn what's in foods. Um, so it gives you flexibility. So say if you're out and you are at a birthday or you're around people in a social environment and, you know, there's a food day that you really love and that you used to, you know, really binge on that food, but you know in your calories or your macros, you've got some space there, you know, a bit of leeway, you can probably fit a little bit of it in if you don't go too overboard, knowing, hey, I can have, you know, a bowl of ice cream if I just have two scoops and not the whole tub, I can work it into my calories for the day and then not beat myself out about it the next day. It's a really good approach that just allows you to have that intake without feeling the guilt um, and then hopefully not overeating because you don't get that stress response thinking of it as a bad food if it's actually fit into your calories, calories for the day or the macros. So yeah, I hope that that helps a little bit and it's just a topic that I believe is really important to talk about. It's kind of one that goes a little bit you know, quiet, no one really wants to discuss it. But I recently took a seminar and I got everyone to raise their hand in the room if they've ever had a negative relationship with food or they've ever had um, binge eating or anorexia or any eating disorders. And I'd say 95% of the girls in that room of about 40 people raised their hands. And I knew a fair few of them and I didn't even know about that before. So I think it's something that everyone needs to speak up about and women are so hard on ourselves, you know. You see social media and you see posts out there, you see selfies on Instagram, you see selfies on Facebook, and people believe that that's what these fitness models or these models walk 